Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to read and write to local files. So this is extremely useful so you can have data persistence. And the benefit of this is if you launch the application, do something, it saves the data, close down the application, launch again, you can, you know, essentially continue where you left off. It's great if you maybe downloaded data from the internet, it could be an image, it could be just simple text, and you want to save it for, you know, later offline usage. It might be because you want offline functionality or just so the user can actually access some of it without having to re-download it for, you know, from a speed perspective. Okay, so to use this, pretty simple. You want to go to first go to the pubspec.yaml file and we need to add the path underscore provider package. And to get the latest version of that, if you just open up your web browser, Go to pub.dartlang.org for slash packages and literally search for the package that you are looking for. So for us, it's path underscore provider and the latest version. And you can literally just copy this. It's 0 0.50 0 plus 1, but it might be a slightly different version when you do it. Just do packages.get. And now we can actually start using the path provider functionality. So what we are first going to do is have a few imports. So import dot async, import dot io, and you're going to import package flutter foundation. And finally, we are going to import package, not flutter. It is going to be the path provider path provider dot, dot file and there we go okay so now what we are going to do is create a class and this class is going to be called counter storage we're just going to have a counter on our screen which when pressed it will increment but the actual number that it's on will persist between app launches so first of all we're going to have a future method which is basically going to get the local path because this is useful because on android the path will be slightly different but using this code it will be dynamic regardless of what sort of platform you are using this on you just do final directory equals await get application documents directory and then we are going to return the directory.path. Now we are going to say future file. We are going to get the local file now. So get underscore local file asynchronous. And this is going to be final path equals await underscore local path. So it was just literally using this method and then getting the path. Once it's got the path, it will we'll be able to get the file. So we just do return file and the location is dollar path. So whatever the actual location is, for slash and then the name of the local file. We're gonna call it counter.txt. We can have as many as you want. It's good to you know do this, you know, essentially this. So it basically creates the file at the start of the application. So that's just a little bit of, you know, a little extra little tip, a little bit of setup that you, you should be doing. So we're going to create another method. And this is just going to allow us to read the counter. It's going to be as an integer, but the data that you want to read is totally up to you. You can modify this code to suit your needs. So it's going to try it because just in case it doesn't work, maybe the file doesn't exist or something you can't access it. The final file equals await underscore local file. So this will get the file location where this gets the path location. So this call right here basically combines these two. And it's been separated just in case we just want to get the local path anywhere else then we are going to read the file so we've got this string contents 
And no matter even if they are numbers, we are just going to always read it as a string, then we could pass it later on. The file.read as string. And we are going to return and we're going to now we are actually going to pass it. We're going to pass the contents as an integer because we know this is just going to be an integer. And well, we need a catch block just in case something goes wrong. And with the catch block, we'll return zero. Okay, so now we're going to have one last method. And um, you probably guessed it. This is going to take a file and this is going to write to the file itself. So int counter async. And here we're going to say final file equals await underscore local file and to write to the file we return file dot write as string before we read a string now it's write a string and uh, it's going to be a string and we're just going to say dollar counter okay so i need to learn our spell future but apart from that we're all good to continue so now what do we need to do? What else have we got? So in our widget right here, what we are going to do is is going to create a final counter storage and we're gonna call it storage and we are going to pass through the actual storage um we're gonna have a pass through and that's going to be a solid so we're gonna say uh, let me think about this do we need to do that no what we are actually going to do is say equal counter storage like so okay so what is next? We're wrong off there now. Wrong off there. Okay, so what we're going to do in here, we're going to create an integer. So int underscore counter. And then we're going to say void at. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to create the constructor. So my homepage. And in here we are going to say widget dot storage dot read counter dot then int value and we are going to set state so your dates to state underscore counter equal to that. Okay, so next we are going to create a method to actually increment the counter. We're going to be implementing all the button and the things to, you know, display this very soon. So future file underscore increment counter um, set state future needs to be self spell correctly. And in here, let's say underscore counter plus plus. So it's just going to increment it by one. But what you do to it, what you store, is totally up to you. Next, we need to write the variable, the string to the file. So return widget dot storage dot write counter and underscore counter. Okay, so now what we are going to do is basically in here I'm going to add a column in here we're going to add some children so out of here I'm going to have a piece of text and the child is going to be underscore counter no, it's not going to be a child, sorry. Underscore counter 
There we go. And we are going to have a raise button. So we're going to say raised button. And this is going to have a child in the text. And I'm going to say, I'm going to call this increment. And I'm going to say on pressed. It is going to call, we've got to spell increment right. The, the increment counter method. Now if I reload it, see what we get. So we get that. Method plus will call on null. Where am I even looking? Set this to zero first. Let me try one last thing. Void in its state. Let me override this instead. At override. Let me do a hot restart. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it's already at 13. So if you do, okay, so we're at 24 now. If I shut down the application, just remember that 24, because it's installed, we can just literally go to it. This is how we know. Oh, is it not that one? Gone. Should be this one. Let me just rerun it. Not why. Tested it on my device. It'll find on the device. It could be an emulator issue potentially. But let's just rerun it. So we haven't deleted you know, the APK or anything. The the application. Okay, so it's installing the APK. There we go, it's still on 24. And if you were to do that again, it would still be there. So we use that to read the data. And that's basically how you read and write data. If you have any questions about any of this, so you know, this is gonna be generic. You might have a different file name. Read and write and counter instead of a counter, you might write something slightly different for the most part. It's going to be basically the same. And this, you know, getting it initially is going to be the same. And again, instead of incrementing, you could store something else, but instead of that, you just have something else. But that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message, and I will definitely assist you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next awesome video.